From the Funky Town Network. Welcome to the Barber Shop, where local music people talk about local music stuff. I'm Matthew Bros, your host. We are broadcasting from the bunker here in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, uh, under the COVID watch, uh, but we're still uh, still maintaining social distancing. Uh, my my panelists, who are six feet away from me at the very least, uh, over here on to my left is uh, first one is I'm Ivan Dillard. Uh, what, what do you do? I'm a singer songwriter and a cello player. Yes, indeed. And we also have Hey, I'm Sarah Reagan. I am the director of Girls Rock Fort Worth. Indeed, and then on the on the phone we have uh, Levi Ray, uh, singer songwriter, and uh, occasional live sound of Yeah, and so as as kind of mentioned here, we're all sort of in a um, in a in a situation <laughs> right now. This the well, last. What's that? Are we in hell? It, it might be. It might be. We're getting close. Uh, we're kind of in a situation where even uh, so, even last month, last month's episode was recorded at the beginning of March. It was in a physical space, uh, and it was not kind of what it is now. And so, the speed at which all of this has happened has kind of made us all a little bit dizzy. I think mm-hmm. probably. Mm-hmm. I had about seven hundred bucks worth of gigs evaporate uh in about a two-day period and uh levi i know kind of had everything evaporate uh all my income gone yeah yeah you know and so i guess yeah, I, we're, we're in the thousands what's that we're in the thousands of dollars yeah yeah so i guess I mean, you know usually what i'll do in, on these shows is kind of throw out individual like here's what's happening in the scene stuff but honestly i don't know that anything is happening in the scene other than people just kind of trying to make it work uh i don't know if you guys have just thoughts on on like for working musicians how how have we been doing how are we is is the online thing helping at all with any of us i mean yeah yeah a little bit for me um, not much in terms of, say, paying any big bills, but right. for smaller bills and, you know, for food and stuff, it has been it has been helpful. Has, it, stream. has your but, observation been that, uh, my observation was in the first week that we all started sheltering in place and whatnot, it seemed like people were tuning in a lot, a lot and there was a lot of people donating. It feels to me like it slowed down, and I don't know if that's just me. Or that... no, it, I, I I would agree with that. And part of that may just be that people are running out of money. Uh, okay. Could also be that maybe the novelty of it is worn off a little bit. Uh, people are like, oh look, another guy with a guitar on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, because there's it, it is almost like, especially on like Saturdays and Sundays, mm-hmm. uh, like almost almost every notification on my on my face spaces like so and so just went live you know and uh and of course we're doing it right now uh but again i don't really know what the alternative is you know i mean people had talked about maybe like busking you know finding a place to kind of busk with us with a bit of distance between you and the tip jar what but you'd have to find somewhere where there was enough foot traffic right um And also, we've talked on this show about this before. Busking in Fort Worth is always a little bit dodgy because no one's really sure what the laws are. Right. Yeah. It's pretty much down to the individual cop, from what I can tell. Yeah, I've 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 been um, definitely uh, approached by cops busking. They weren't they weren't mean at all, mm-hmm. you know, but they were like, "Oh yeah, you have to have a license to busk here in this location." Right. Maybe it depends on location. I'm not sure over here. It's it's never been terribly clear to me. I, I one of my goals actually at some point is to have a police officer uh, on the. Can I have some Facebook? <laughs> I want to tag you, Sarah Nicole. <laughs> Sorry, we're we're conducting business here as we as we speak. Um, but yeah, I it always just seems to me like nobody knows what the law is uh, mm-hmm. about it. And uh, but again, right now I don't know that it makes any difference really. Um, because even like in the well, stock, just people aren't out. Yeah, <laughs> or shouldn't be. Well, well I feel like if you would to do a, a a busk or whatever, you uh, especially if you were like live streamer or something, I feel like you would totally run the risk of being <laughs> 
shamed on social media or something. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, like, um, well, that's, that is one thing. So, for instance, we, uh, me and uh, Trista went out to the park earlier, and I've seen people on there going, nobody should go to the park because you're going to get the COVID, you know. And But I'm when I'm at the park, I see people are at least six to ten feet away from each other. No one's, like, in each other's business for the most part. You know, don't lick the banisters or anything, you know, but, like, <laughs> <laughs> I still don't think it's... You got to get out at some point, otherwise you're going to completely lose your, your mind, I think. I think uh, I think yeah. going live on location um, yeah. is a great great idea because like you're also trying to give people content. So if they're at home in right. their house, I mean, I've just found if I'm because I like to go fishing, like I'll yeah. just go out. And I'll just have like maybe a two minute video of just wherever I am. Mm-hmm. I won't tell people my fishing holes, right? Yeah, but people seem to really tune into that because it's something cool. You to know, watch, and it's so. funny because I've what I've seen is people broadcasting doing doing live feeds. And it's the same thing that they would do in their house, but they just found a place, you know, like they went out to a park or they went to uh, an abandoned yeah. warehouse or something. And that does kind of at least give you a different picture than somebody else's living room. Right. Because, yeah. like, people are kind of tired of <laughs> seeing yeah. living rooms at this point. Right. <laughs> yeah. And even, even club, well, you know, Mass is doing the thing where you're broadcasting from, uh, it's not Mass, but it's somebody's <clears throat> rehearsal space. And the mystery location. The mystery yeah. location, yeah. And uh, it's kind of... You shall not reveal. No, I, I shall not reveal. But I think that's useful. Cause, and sometimes I've been freaked out because it'll be like, live from such and such you know, restaurant. I'll be like, what, really? Like, how are they live from the restaurant? But it's the only them. Like, they're the only ones that are in there. Uh, except for the people providing the takeout or whatever. So it's kind of a... It's a strange... Uh, it's a strange time, obviously. Uh, I think there's not only the economic thing to consider, but also the fact that your connection with your audience, like you wonder when we're going to get to a point where people are going to be able to go to a show again, you know, and I don't know if we're talking, I don't know if we're talking about, you know, a couple months, if we're talking about half a year till that happens again i really don't know well, then there's, there's, there's gonna be i think there's, there's just gonna be a huge hangover for this because it's gonna be people even when it's quote unquote supposedly safe there's just gonna be i know there's gonna be a lot of people who are not gonna go out yeah <clears throat> well that's and that's that's the concern also is that i don't think there's gonna be a snap your fingers and like okay now it's over mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. not gonna happen it's gonna take a long yeah. time to recover it'll yeah. be a few people will go out and then if those few people catch something then people will stop going out again mm-hmm. <laughs> or if you yeah. go out and if they're okay then maybe more people will go out um but yeah. we, don't, we have no idea what the time horizon is on that. I, I really think that the hangover is gonna last until they well, they said they said like eighteen months for a vaccine. Yeah, that's that's I mean, the, yeah, a year to eighteen months right now for a vaccine, and so you know that may be what we're looking at. I don't know. Uh, it, yeah. At, for for those, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, you know, I just mean in terms of saying, you know, to go to a club like Lola's or, mm-hmm. or Match or something, and well, and it makes you wonder. You know, I'm like a hundred other people. Yeah, and it makes you wonder about. So uh, those venues, you know, are those venues yeah. going to be able to reopen? Mm-hmm. I know I was trying to get Brian Freller on here and, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of uncertainty as to whether or not Lola's is going to open again or whether or not Mass is going to open again. Um, mm-hmm. Because, the moon bar, I think even Chris well, right. The, yeah, the moon just opened. And, <clears throat> and, and so there's, I worry a bit about, will there be any venues left? Uh, mm-hmm. By the time all of this goes down, yeah. And thankfully, I mean, thankfully, there's some places like the posts that are doing food, so they are at least staying open doing that. Um, and so maybe there will be th- those places that also did food, but just a bar bar. I don't know that those are even gonna survive if it goes on for you know very long. I hadn't even yeah, thought about that. <laughs> Thanks for the, putting that in my head. Oh, <laughs> oh, Another thing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> We already don't have enough venues, I think. Well, and, you know, and, and then it's it's kind of, I've said on this show numerous times, you know, having grown up here, this is the has been the best time to be in Fort Worth as a musician right. in the 30-odd years I've been playing around here. But I it's kind of just come to a screeching halt, and I, and mm-hmm. I worry 
that it's going to stay that way uh, uh, for a while. And and who who survives out of it? You know, the, do the venues survive? Do the uh, record stores? You know, like Dreamy Life, uh, um, Dogs, Pan- Panther City Vinyl. You know, like mm-hmm. are I get? Are, I assume they're probably conducting some online business, maybe some curbside business. But um, I don't know how they're paying the bills yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and th- this is, I guess, it seems very selfish, like a, a very musician-centric way of thinking about the whole thing, because obviously it's a much bigger thing than, mm-hmm. than as it affects the music industry. But it does affect... Um, what I'm curious about, too, is to see what music we get out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, to see if there's all these people who are kind of stuck in their houses, uh, are are right now is someone making the next big really awesome album that we're going to be talking about for years? You know, um, just because they had the time, <laughs> uh, or and is there going to be a big? <laughs> is it going to be a big rush of like? And what's it going to be like? Is it going to be kind of? people being sad about it or is it people kind of being hopeful about when it when it finishes i don't know mm-hmm. um it just seems like i i've wondered that for a while like why we don't have more protest music and kind of social activist music that's out there well you've got some <laughs> i know i haven't you know uh, but um <clears throat> you know with all the crazy stuff that's been going on it always seems to me like there should be something on the radio other than I'm going to the club and <laughs> yeah maybe there is maybe there is but they're not playing it on the radio well right, right you know right. yeah and that's that's true I mean there's yeah. got to be more people pissed off than just me I'm sure there are mm-hmm. you know there are but you're you're right I mean they're not the ones getting signed you know yeah um, and that's that's been a concern for a really long time but I don't know maybe maybe if the damn labels can't stay open <laughs> you know I mean I say that. You think about all these, you know, I, I always think about the local musicians plight, but there's also national acts that can't tour either. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of these acts that got signed for, you know, pretty significant advances and they can't go out and make that uh, money back. Right. Um, you know, I don't know what that does to the music industry at large. Uh, maybe it kind of speeds this thing that's already been happening where so many of us have just stopped playing the label game entirely. And have just been well. I'm going to be a DIY, you know, uh, craftsman. You know, uh, that process has been going for a while. But if there is no actual major in music industry uh, that's functional, because uh, again, I was thinking about when I went to uh, the last time I went to a big show, like a show that had a lot of people, and there were hundreds, hundreds of people at the show. I'm trying to picture the circumstance in which I would do that right now. You know, and it would, it, I would have to feel pretty safe, you know, to do that. Yeah. You know, and well, and, and so Levi, you've worked in, in that on the business end, you know, doing uh, sound and, and things of that nature. And I'm just curious about all the people who are going to be switching careers, who are career sound men and, uh, you know, people. Yeah. Well, I, I was about to say, I think that there's going to be a whole lot of, uh, production people, sound people, and, you know, uh, local and regional musicians who are going to, if this goes on for another couple of months, they're going to be getting jobs Yeah, that are not associated with those industries. And so, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> same thing with people who work in the service industry. Well, that's there, the thing is there are my people who have been, you know, bartenders or waiters for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, they're gonna it, have to go, they might have to go do something else. Right, you know, and what's that going to be? You know, are you going to go work at Walmart? Are you going to, uh, like, you know, yeah, you know, stock at Whole Foods so, or whatever, you know, I mean, yeah, I, and what's the quality of those jobs going to be? Yeah. You know, and well, and again, not that those ever paid a whole hell of a lot, but, um, it's, well, it's, I mean, if you're some of sometimes they do though. Well, I mean, sure, you know. yeah. If you're working at a at a at a primo venue, you know, uh, I'm sure like the Kessler or whatever pays their guys pretty well, you know. But um, I don't know. I, I worry about kind of the loss of all of that infrastructure and the loss of places that you can rely on that are going to be there when it when everything. I think about like the, the Kessler or whatever, or like um, 
the um, well tulips. They were going to open that tulips venue. Um, yeah, and that I guess is just kind of kiboshed for the moment. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's uh, I don't know. I mean, if the deep pockets are going to survive, everybody else is fucked. Well, and and but what I wonder about is, do the deep pockets then decide? You know, I'm tired of not being able to go to concerts. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, do they care? I don't know. Um, does it does it consolidate all of this stuff further into a uh, the realm of just people who have money to do? I mean, it's always kind of been like that. You don't open a venue yeah. unless you have a certain amount of money to, to do it. Well, it particularly sucks because if if you can't if you're a musician, you can't uh, book any shows. And your music is on all the streaming platforms, and you make next to nothing from that. So if this had happened, say, in the 90s and before, maybe people would, they would go and buy your music right. somewhere. Or, or, you know, order CDs or something. But in, now it's streaming, so it's so, the income is dried up. There's just nothing... There's nowhere to go. Well, and I, I thought about that too because I've been posting in along with like the Venmo and, and other type of info. I've I've been like, you know, you can go to Bandcamp and buy my tracks if you uh-huh. want to. Yeah. Um, but I really haven't seen a whole lot of people take me up on that just because either they already have them or uh, they don't, they're not people who own music. Like they, they stream everything. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's, of course, that's an issue that's been going on for a few years now. Is the fact that people may not actually even be buying stuff anymore, and you get your point oh 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 one percent per stream, you know, for this stuff. Um, it it wor- I worry a little bit about it, kind of um, make, making a bad situation worse as far as the music industry. Now, I don't want to necessarily be entirely doom and gloom on this because it also <laughs> seems like it's possible that some good things could come out of it. For um, sure. Maybe we get to a point where, uh, again, the major music industry kind of is unable to make money hand over fist like they used to be able to do. And maybe that opens up. I remember when uh, the big music box stores like the Blockbuster Musics and all of that were running all the little record stores out of town. And I thought, oh, gosh, you know, that's that's it for the small record store. But then what happened is eventually... uh, online basically destroyed the big box music stores and so now we have all these little record stores that that have popped up again Mm -hmm. uh i wonder that with things like uh guitar center you know guitar center's having trouble uh staying open if they don't have trouble for sure (laughs) yeah well you know like if they go away do we see then a proliferation of these small uh music shops that that open up um it could possibly provide an opening for small record labels to fill a gap because they don't have all this overhead. They're not paying for multi-million dollar tours uh, for, you know, these uh, acts that they've signed for all these advances. I, you know, I'm old enough to remember when you would have a small label that could be pretty profitable, you know, if it if they carried acts that were not name brand necessarily, but were consistent enough with their touring and sales to, to sell enough to, to keep the label running. Uh, that has pretty much gone out the window hmm. with stuff like streaming because people, the label itself, can't really make anything off of you uh, except for for yeah. Well, I mean, the, the money at this point is it's from artists touring or playing live shows and then selling merch. Yeah, and again, that's stuff that the artist needs to be able to to pay the bills, and the labels don't necessarily get as much of that as they used to. Now you can sign like a 360 deal where they get your merch as well as, you know, part of your ticket sales and things like that. Uh, but again, you have to be bringing in enough to make that worth the, mm. worth the time uh, and worth the effort. And it's already been really tricky for, for small labels to do that. And I think the only way that it picks back up is if either we are in kind of a more of a virtual economy where um, you don't really have overhead uh, in the in the traditional sense you, you know you can run a label out of your house if you want to because you're not having to keep inventory you're not having to keep mm-hmm. physical discs um, now the tricky bit is how do you, how do you make enough income off of you know um, 
product and it maybe not may not be product it may be ticket sales it may be uh stuff like stage it or uh, you know uh, chris monder is tuning in okay good chris chris monder uh, is the owner of the moon he's, he's watching um you know actually tell him if if he has any thoughts about how venues are going to get through this just uh type them out and and we, we can read them on the on the thing here because i i would like to hear from a venue owner their thoughts on it um because that that's an end of the business that i've kind of sort of i used to i used to book bands for for venues but i never really owned one so i don't know how that and i mean it's going to be different you're going to have places like like uh the posts that sell music that sell um food that Mm -hmm. are still being able to do takeout but then places like lola's that just don't um or the moon, the moon, I guess, has the birdie bop thing in there. So maybe they'll be okay. I don't know. But I kind of I kind of feel like I should... You know, we're all just kind of sitting here going, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, we, we don't know. We have no idea. But I also <clears throat> don't want to have it be 100%, oh, my God, we're all going to die. There's a way. You know. There's definitely a way. I think. Well, and, and the thing that somebody posted, which I think made a lot of sense, was, you know, we should remember that in this time so many people turn to art Mm -hmm. to get through it so many people are watching shows and listening to music and so one what one would hope would be that people reevaluate the value of art in their lives and how much how much it's worth paying for because i think in in the culture at large for a long time the assumption has been well you know i pay for my uh pay for my water and electric and I pay for food and stuff but I'm not like I'm not going to pay for music you know music is just a thing that surrounds us at all times because it really does you go to the grocery store there's music you go in the car there's music you go almost anywhere there's music so it kind of is it's not like it was say a hundred years ago where to to go and hear music was kind of a special thing Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't something that was around you all the time regardless of whether you asked for it um and it would be nice if we could get to a point where people realized that it was that it was a special thing um and that's prob that might be a little pollyanna i don't know but <laughs> i think i think a lot of people are yeah i really do i've been pleasantly surprised i guess mm-hmm. um just messing around with facebook live yeah. you know I've been playing. I've been playing a lot of cello on Facebook Live. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, well, first of all, not working. I have time to play and yes. practice, you know, because it's not really, you know, it's not exactly easy. And I don't want to play something or perform something if I don't have time to practice it. So yeah, before I just didn't really, you know, have time to get anything up to par, you know. Right. But um, people seem to when I first played like the first box suite because that's mm-hmm. you know everybody's heard the prelude to the first box suite it's like yeah. the most famous cello mm-hmm. song if you just google cello song that will come up you know it's right like, i'll play the, f- the whole suite everybody's heard the first movement but but they're at home now they have time to sit through the whole the whole thing's about half an hour yeah, yeah. and in my thing with classical music is like you know the world was a lot slower and quieter when it came out right. when it was written and and now things are fast but like look now everything is slow yes mm-hmm. you know so I played the whole suite and I was shocked that like 90% of people like stayed through the whole there. thing. You know, there was no, there was no explosions. There was no titties that, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That, you know, the world is a little bit slower and a little bit quieter now. So right. maybe you can kind of play the music that kind of requires that type of mood maybe that's a thought you know i mean that really is a thought that um and i've i've actually i've written some some poetry on this topic you know that it feels as if we're sort of being forced to slow down yes. and may, and maybe that's good mm-hmm. maybe Have we you read your poetry on live which is what i've done yeah, yeah I've been doing that's great that, you know. oh let me know when you do yeah, I'll, i will I'll yeah I've been, i'm tagging you but yeah uh, good night, poetry. nice yeah but it's like I, I have thought for a while that we're all moving too dang fast. Yeah. Honestly. You know, that we're all just, everything is just, I mean, my calendar, my God, you know, I mean, like a month ago, my calendar was just, just solid. 
uh, mm. with stuff. And it was all stuff I wanted to do for the most part, but it was just a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and some part of my brain was going, wait, wait, <laughs> can we slow down a little bit? Do we have to do all the things? Mm -hmm. You know, do you have to do this gig and that gig and the podcast and the, and the, you know, all the stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> and have a job and, you know, um, it just kind of felt like, wow, that's just an awful lot for one person to do. But then I guess the, the thing was that to some extent it, it was it was a survival thing because if, you know, like I say, my, my job pays close to a living wage, but not quite. So to make up the difference, I play a lot of shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I kind of had to take all the gigs that came through. Um, but if that's not right now I really can't spend money like where are you going to spend money at <laughs> right 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 you, know, like you go to the store and once you have enough food for you know a couple of weeks well you you kind of don't have anything it's to go do it's kind of been a relief I'm like well I've got food I've got gas I've got weed like right, yeah, well, I mean really what else is there <laughs> well you're not going to go and do the and, and again I miss the thing where you would just go I don't know, let's go see who's playing at Mass, you know, and you, and you just kind of wander in and interact with people as you find them. Uh, that, I do miss that. But I also kind of don't miss sort of the constant feeling of like, I should be doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, right now... I'm not being productive enough. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you know, I'm, I'm just sitting here. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't just be sitting here. <laughs> I should be productive, right? Yeah. I should be doing well, there, and there's been that pressure even that like hopefully everybody comes out of this with like a new hobby or a yeah. you know talent or something that but you I know and that's just bullshit well <laughs> right and and to a certain degree you can but also to a certain degree you kind of don't that's not always what it's about you right. know I, I think that's about yeah um the, the and and this is a very american thing and it's uh, the american thing is always to produce 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 mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. do stuff do stuff do mm -hmm. stuff and in some in a lot of other countries that's not the case you know like you can go to uh go to spain or whatever and people will actually say i'm just gonna sit here for two hours yeah. <laughs> they have not, a siesta that's national <laughs> right you know yeah and it, and tr you know try telling that to your boss here you know i mean that's right. not gonna i'm gonna work. take a nap right now it's three <laughs> o'clock so peace <laughs> no, like that doesn't that's not a thing that we 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 assume that, and it's kind of a lot of it. Kind of descends from that whole Calvinist way that the country was founded. Was like you know, uh, you know, we got to work ethic and and uh, kind of prove our worthiness to, to God by being by doing all this stuff. But I think we lose something in that. I think mm -hmm. we lose the quiet. We lose the stillness of our minds. There's uh, Nathan Hamilton has a good song about that where you kind of. I can't remember the last time my mind was still, you know, mm -hmm. like when you lie down to go to bed, your mind's not still, mm -hmm. your mind's thinking of all of this stuff that you have to do. Right. Uh, but do you have to do it? Is it stuff that you actually have to do or is it stuff that you've convinced yourself that right. you have to do? Mm -hmm. We have a lot of artificial anxiety. Yeah, we really do. And again, some of, some of it's real, some of it's stuff that, I mean, especially for those of us who are parents, you know, I mean, there's, there is stuff you have to do. You have to make sure mm -hmm. the kids got lunch. You got to make sure, you know, that everything's taken care of. But there's also needs to be time for just kind of hanging out. Right. Uh, and so, you know, when I've had my, <coughs> my kid uh, on some of these days when I'm the little voice is gnawing at the back of my head saying, we should be doing something productive. But what we're doing is just kind of sitting. And I, I kind of don't feel guilty about it, <laughs> you know, because we're talking. Mm -hmm. We're just having casual conversations about stuff. And. It's okay. It's okay yeah. to just sit and spend. And I'm thinking about like when I was a teenager, how much of that type of time there was, mm -hmm. you know, like to just, I would just go over to my friend's house and we would just do nothing for, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, you would just kind of hang out and talk and uh, you didn't have to have an agenda. Right. You could just kind of just not do anything. Yeah. And, and that's not been a thing in my adult life at all uh, for mm -hmm. the most part. So maybe, maybe we're relearning how to do that. Uh, I hope. 
what what I worry about is that the powers that be or whatever going to be like, okay, back on the you know back on the right. line, you know. Yeah. Um, they're they're the ones that are money hungry. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, and I'm lucky enough. I work for a nonprofit, so they're not. That's not their motivation, but they are. <laughs> they do feel pressured because they're taxpayer funded. Right. It's like okay, well, we got to make results. We got to we got to do stuff. But right now, of course, you can't do anything. Um, and uh, I've been monologuing for a while, and I haven't heard Levi say anything. Are we <laughs> still there? Are you still I'm there? Still here. <laughs> it's just it, you're, I, wait, uh, you're waiting for a pause. I, I'll say that. Uh, I mean, I agree with everything you're saying. I just, uh, I don't know. I have a huge level of anxiousness about yeah being home and productivity and. And I don't know if that's because, <laughs> I mean, right before it happens, I pretty much decided to become, to go back to being a full-time musician. Yeah. Uh, and so, luckily I have uh, my fiance here and she's able to still work uh, right now. So, <laughs> you know, we're not destitute, but... um yeah, well, that's lucky. I don't know. I I I I went from being the breadwinner to being I don't know what you'd call me now. <laughs> well, I mean, a you person know. sitting at home, uh, a yeah. napper. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, and I think a lot of us have had that type of of uh, realignment of like you know. What what am I if I'm not the person who's bringing in mm. the who's bringing home the bacon, you know? Right. And maybe that was never the most important thing, you know. Or maybe yep. I mean, obviously it's a component because you can't you can't live without the money. But well, um, um, yeah, it's I think it's it's a little both those things. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a little, uh, and maybe it's just me having been raised in the, in the country, you know, where there was this kind of guilt. You know, like there was a guilt if you weren't working, you know, like the worst thing you could possibly be was unemployed, mm. you know, like growing up, like I was like, you know, oh, well, that guy's a bum. He's unemployed, you know, and it, even if it wasn't your fault. Um, and I think that there's still a little there's still a little voice back there that's kind of like, well, I'm, I've been sitting here for an hour uh, just reading a book. Uh, is that productive? Is that something I should be doing? And and I hate I kind of hate that voice. <laughs> I, I think we've come to uh, define ourselves and our worth too much by capitalism. Yes, mm -hmm. I mean I know personally I'll I'll look at myself and be like you know I'm I'm being I'm being healthy I'm working out like mm -hmm. you know obviously I have friends so I'm not a terrible person yeah. like right. you know like I have good relationships. You know, I'll, I'll be normal. I'll be normally feeling pretty, pretty decent about myself. But then I'll think about the job situation. You know, mm -hmm. I have this debt. I have that. I haven't. Ah, oh, shit. You know, my car payment is late, and I'll start yeah. feeling like I'm a fucking worthless piece of shit. Right, yeah. I'll start getting down on myself. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm thinking, wow, wait a second. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Really? Well, what's equate, equating your personal worth with your financial worth? And, mm -hmm. and yeah. I've, I've always made a distinction between the two, and but it's difficult because you can be a really good person but still be a complete financial fuck-up. <laughs> <laughs> Disaster, <know>? yeah. <laughs> or you can be the opposite. There's people who are incredibly successful uh, oh, yeah. money-wise but who are complete failures as human beings. Yeah. Uh, so you know the goal. <laughs> would you rather there. like complete solace? <laughs> 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 would you? <laughs> you know, and and that. But you know what? The, that second category has tended to be rewarded more than than the first. The people who are good people but who just don't have any money um, are often still kind of thought of as like, well, there's something wrong with them, you know. Um, and but there's not. There's something wrong with the system. Well, yes, and that's that's why I agree. There's something wrong with the system, but that doesn't mean that people don't feel that as a legitimate thing. I of mean, course, of course, they do. I, it's, well, they, it's like, the, I don't know, the old thing is like not supposed to turn a, a hobby into a career or, you know, uh, well, there's that. something you love to do. But, but, the, it, but, when, but when it is how you make your money, it's sort of like, I don't know, I, personally, I've been feeling like, what the hell have I been doing 
And then if this goes on for a while, yeah, what the hell am I doing and what am, what am I going to do? And is the whole idea <laughs> yeah. of well, being a full-time yeah. musician, is that even something that's... Well, and I think that, even, that thing about no. like, don't make your hobby into a career sometimes that's spoken from a place of fear mm. because well and also and also i think calling something a hobby is a little different i mean i don't view playing music as a hobby i view it as i mean you know it's like breathing yeah but, you're uh, right it's a thing that you would do even if there were not no money attached to it whatsoever uh you know and and i'm like that i would i would plunk on my guitar if nobody paid me to do it you know but um but the fact is, is that some of the most important pieces that have gotten th- people through hard times have come from people who have made their uh, art into a career. You know, I mean, you think about mm-hmm. albums that you've listened to that have gotten you through hard times. Yeah. Um, if that person had decided, you know, I'm just going to play this in my living room and I'm not going to bother to go out and get it recorded and put it out on a, on a label or whatever you would not have that to, to help you get through those times. Um, you think about, like I watch some of these TV shows and, and you look at the credits list. You mm-hmm. look at the credits list and you think all those people put this thing together so that I could have 30 minutes of kind of... Yeah, you know, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know. And, and I'm kind of like, I think about it and I, and I go, God, you know, I mean, thank goodness people have made a career out of their hobby in and, and cases, you know. Um, but at the same time, I also understand the problems of it. When I, I So I, I quit about back in 2009. I quit my day job. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, music music's going to be the whole thing. And for about six years, I kind of was able to do it. But, you know, by exhausting all of the capital I built up uh, mm-hmm. in the years prior, you know, and then you finally get reach an end point of that, like, okay, I can no longer pay my bills. And so you got to go back to the, back to the cube. Now I don't regret having done it, but you know, there's always the little voice back there. It's kind of like, well, you know, if you were any good, it would, it would have happened, you know, but that's of course is not true. There's a lot of people who are way better than I am who haven't been able to make it work either. Uh, it's, it's this combination of, luck and who you know and where you are and uh who hears you when and uh those things are these very undefinable uh things that are hard to you know they're they're hard, they're hard to say i saw a guy i actually unfriended a guy because he posted this thing's like well all these people complaining about the money you know there are uh all these millionaires in the world it's your fault if you don't have any you know if you're not one of them i'm kind of like you know nothing about statistics <laughs> and uh, sociology, and like if you're born into one economic class, how hard is it is to mm-hmm. get out of that? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to say nothing of of uh, race relations and and you know uh, gender pay gaps and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, the idea that if you haven't made it professionally as an artist, then your artist art is not worth anything. It's that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a new point. what do you think about people like Van Gogh? He never made a damn dime off of his stuff, you know, right. and, and it's now some of the most celebrated art in history. And of course we can, we can kind of tease ourselves with that notion. Like, well, when I'm dead, everyone will understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you don't necessarily want to do that, but uh, <laughs> there's actually a Neil Gaiman's story about that. Just kind of this artist who buried him- themselves with their poems so that no one could appreciate them, you know, and then just kind of like, that's, yeah, that's not going to do anything. Uh, but I don't know it. I think this whole thing kind of puts us into that mindset of like, gosh, what, what is what I do? What is it for? You know, uh, apart from just pleasing myself, can it can it be for helping somebody who's having a hard time get through all of this mess? I've had people message me after these live streams, going, you know, thank you for doing that this, this tonight. I was having a really hard time yeah. tonight, and I and I'm you helped me to get it's through. It's more important now than ever. Yeah, definitely. I think that aspect of it. Uh, it's you know completely apart from the business end um that aspect of of music as healing of music as a um a a, a 
I don't know, a shared communal experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, Glenn Phillips had talked about kind of the difference between playing when you're plugged into a PA and, and, you know, singing through versus standing in a room full of people and all singing. That's a different kind of experience. Um, and it's one that sometimes we've lost and it's, it's, it's something that things like churches can provide of like, Oh, well, you know, we're all in the room we're singing regardless of whatever else is going on sometimes you get a little warm fuzzy from that just being in a room from singing and i've thought that sometimes in some of these jams that i've been to where everyone's just kind of sitting around a campfire uh you know singing a song that maybe we kind of sort of know you know and uh <laughs> you know and i think that that aspect of music is probably it's making me feel better about yeah. what we do. It's making me think, you know, look, even if we can't have the physical campfire, uh, we can have yep. the virtual one. Yeah. It's uh, very, very burning, very bright right now. Yeah. yeah. And and I like it. I, I wish there was a better technological way for people to collaborate that way, to be like, okay, you know, you're broadcasting in from Longview and you're broadcasting in from over here and we're all playing at the same time. Of course, this technologic there's there's speed of light reasons why that doesn't work um but uh there's still kind of a communal sense that's going on right now and and that's why why i've loved fort worth for a long time is it does have a communal feel to the music scene and i feel like right now that's being showcased uh i think a lot of people are and people who aren't even from here you know who who are kind of just tuning into these streams Uh, I used to like it when Keegan would do his little uh, broadcast from Amsterdam or wherever he was playing over there. And, um, you know, it kind of gave you a sense of, I don't know, it it was sort of like like one of those little fireside chats, you know. It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, we're... I'm. The next voice you hear is coming to you from a different place and and they're having this experience. And it's it's kind of enriching where you are um, having your experience, whatever it is. I don't know. That's, that's my sense of it. Um, but at the same time, we do miss the other. We do miss going, hey, I'm going to meet you down at such and such, you know, and we'll get a couple drinks and we'll hear, hear my buddy play, buddy's band play. And uh, I, I do miss that. And, mm-hmm. and I hope to hell it actually happens again. <laughs> it will. It will. It will. It will. <laughs> well, I know with, like, with the girls rock, so... Mm-hmm. Uh, we haven't really even talked about this. Uh, the girls rock camp is not happening this no, summer. Uh, not in the normal fashion. Not in the normal. <laughs> so, so what is happening then? So, uh, yeah, we've we've had made the decision to cancel our in person camp that was right. set up for June. Um, we just felt like, you know, it. We may still be, you know, in this. Yeah. Um, for a while, and not only that, if if it were to end, you know, at the end of this month or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to take time to recover sure. um, in a lot of ways, emotionally, financially, and all of that. So we made that very hard decision um, to cancel that, but we're planning on doing um, online stuff, you mm-hmm. know, um, kind of looking at different formats where it'll be like a week where we do Facebook Live yeah. workshops and shows and things like that or some sort of lesson throughout the summer for different you know and then trying to figure out you know if somebody needs an instrument we'll be able to give them an instrument right and, you know how you would manage all of that but, so know, there's a lot to think of that's a good you know? service though because mm-hmm. i know that's a lot of what you guys have done in the right. past has, has been like just kids who can't have a, a yeah. guitar or whatever you right. know um and uh that's that's been one of my f- the fun parts about whenever you guys would ramp it up and be like okay who's got pedals who's got yeah. you know <laughs> drums who's got stuff like that and it's always I, I think it's cool you know just to kind of watch the community kind of step up for that type mm-hmm, of thing for sure and yeah. so i hope that that keeps going and i hope that at some point you will be able to have a yeah an in-person yeah it's, well. it's definitely hard because you know it's the um i feel like we're a safe place mm-hmm. for our, a lot of our campers and yeah Hopefully they still, you know, feel that connection and, and feel safe. And so that really bumps me out, yeah, <laughs> um, not not does. being able to come together, you know, in person. But um, I'm trying to um, be positive about it and just think of sure. it as a shift in service and, you know. Yeah. 
well, and make whatever happen. And I happen. think about it too, and I think about just the impact you've had already. You know, just with people who uh, girls who had never really played, but right. who did in the past few camps, and mm-hmm. who at least are going to now have the tools at home, right, to be able to create some. I've I've said for years that I think that in a few years from now we will see kind of a lot of female fronted and female uh act female pe- pe- women in the system in, in the, <clears throat> not the system the scene <laughs> system. that yeah not yeah. the system uh who who have benefited from just being able to have a place right where they can do that and not have guys being like you can't play you know right uh so because th- i hate that no, we don't <laughs> we don't stand for that <laughs> no and you shouldn't you shouldn't at all uh, so well, I'm, I'm glad then that, that, that you're at least, uh, keeping some aspect of it going because right. I think there are probably people at home who need it. Definitely. Frankly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it, where, where do people go to find that out? Are you still, have um, a- well, Facebook and Instagram are probably the best places to keep the up to date things. Okay. Um, so girls rock Fort Worth. Um, yeah, girls rock Fort Worth. And okay. then I think Instagram is girls rock FW. Okay. But yeah. So this is a this is a strange episode, and so I feel like we should do something strange. I know that um, normally what we have done at the end of the the show is have a local artist cover a local artist, and I will be doing that. However, I also uh, Ivan Dillard brought in a cello, and we don't normally have a cello in here. So I don't know if you have like a I don't know a short piece of some kind that you would you wouldn't mind playing. I, I think that um, I'd like to sit in on what you're playing. Okay, well that would be fine oh, also. Cool. So we can do that. What key? Do you know what key you're in? Uh, I'm thinking about D. Okay. Is D good? Okay. All right. Uh, so if we want to find out more about what you're doing, you go to go to Girls Rock Fort Worth on all the various social yes. medias. Yes, or girlsrockfw.org. If we want to find out more about Ivan Dillard, where we go on the on the interwebs? Um, you can go, you can check Ivan Dillard Band on Facebook or Ivan Dillard Music on Instagram. Okay. And Levi Ray, where do we go to find more of your stuff? Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, my profile page and my Facebook music page and, uh, com and on all the streaming stuff on Bandcamp. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, at home. <laughs> you got, you got all this time. <laughs> Okay. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys listening. Make sure to, uh, check out our Facebook page, Barbershop Fort Worth. And uh, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep doing this show. And, uh, yeah, sorry, the cat wants out. <laughs> this, is, this is the downside of broadcasting. <laughs> but uh, you guys, everybody out in Fort Worth Music Scene and, and beyond, um, just know that we are listening. And uh, I think there's a lot more people listening than you think there are. Um, because even if you do a Facebook live broadcast and you get like, you know, eight people or whatever, leave it up, leave it up. And people Mm. will have that option to when they're alone at 3 a.m. going, oh my God, I'm going to die. They can at least go, oh, let's sit and watch this thing by this guy that I met one time at a, at a club, you know? Uh, and I think that may mean more to people than you think it does. Uh, so I'm going to do it. I totally agree. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna do a tune. I'm gonna do a song by uh, Bob Ackerman, who's a songwriter in Dallas. Um, when I was getting started back in the '90s, I would go to the uh, open mic at the Windell Tavern every Sunday, and he would host it. And then we would play our really crappy songs uh, all night long. And then he would get up and play this really great song that kind of show us that we needed to work on it <laughs> a little more. So we'll do our tune. Uh, and thanks to you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Somewhere out there on the highway tonight Somebody's feeling blue So far from heaven It's hard to decide Just what's the right thing to do There will be times when they're breaking your heart Times when it's hard to get through Always remember wherever you are, someone in heaven loves you.
Somewhere out there on your lonesome night Far from the comforts of home So many miles from people you love And not enough coins for the phone There will be times when they're breaking your heart Times when it's hard to get through Always remember wherever you are Someone in heaven loves you Play this one Somewhere out there on the highway tonight Somebody's feeling used Driving the line between what's wrong and what's right Wondering which road you should choose There will be times when they're breaking your heart Times when it's hard to get through Always remember wherever you are, someone in heaven loves you. Always remember wherever you are, someone in heaven loves you. Where's another one? Barbershop is brought to you by the Funky Town Network. Please check out their other podcasts, such as Articulation and the original Funky Town Podcast, at funkytownpodcast.podbean.com. <laughs>